Today's video is brought to you by StoryboardThat.com. Please visit TeacherCast.net slash StoryboardThat for a limited time offer. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the TeacherCast App Spotlight. You are listening to the podcast that brings you the best in educational technology right from the app developers themselves. Thank you for allowing TeacherCast to be a part of your professional learning network and making TeacherCast your home for professional development. My name is Jeff Bradbury, and if this is the first time you're listening to the show, thank you so much for joining us today. We have a fantastic show for you today. There's, of course, several ways that you can connect with the show each and every week. You can, of course, check out all the action over on our website, teachercast.net. You can follow us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Leave us a voicemail at teachercast.net slash voicemail. Email us at feedback at teachercast.net. And, of course, we love it when you subscribe to our many audio and video channels over at teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. Guys, we have a great show today. My guests today are the developers of TouchCast, an amazing iPad app that is taking the educational world by storm. I am so thrilled and excited to have them on the show today. Many of you guys have been following TeacherCast programming, and on Sunday nights, After we're finished our Tech Educator podcast, we run a show called the 30 Second Take Podcast done by a wonderful administrator from Minnesota named Brad Gustafson. Now, Brad got me hooked on this app called TouchCast, which is an iPad app that actually allows you to create some dynamic, amazing video content. And you do it all from your iPad. You record everything, you export it, you can edit it from there. And there's some great educators out there that are creating things like Brad Gustafson, Tony Sananis, and there are just so many great things happening. My guests today are the creators of TouchCast, and I want to welcome to the show Mr. Charlie Miller. Charlie, how are you today? I'm good. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for being on the show. Talk to us a little bit about TouchCast. TouchCast is a app we started uh, about three years ago in terms of the idea and then uh, 15, 16 months ago, I actually launched this in the App Store. And the basic idea is uh, an easy to use, powerful video creation tool that if people want to add interactivity to the video, they can do that as well. So it's uh, one side trying to be a whole production studio that's easy to use, and then the other side, add HTML to your video so the viewers of your videos can interact with anything they see inside of it. And it really does allow users to have that one-stop professional studio. I mean, the stuff that the teachers and students are making are amazing. They've got media, video, pictures, you name it. TouchCast can really do it all. So when we started this, uh, we were stuck on iPad 2s, and luckily Apple keeps giving us faster and faster iPads. And now they're so powerful that you can carry this thing around with you that has green screen background removal, animated graphics. We're now starting to experiment with even running external cameras into the iPad. Uh, Hopefully you'll see some exciting things coming out next spring related to that. So, uh, you know, I think uh, iPads have always been viewed as a consumption tool. You know, sit on your couch and watch videos. And now we really want to get people off the couch and think about how you can make amazing videos with your iPad. And... I love the innovations that's coming out. You guys were named as the 2013 app of the year. What what does that mean for a company like yours? Mm-hmm. Uh, it's a great pat on the back. Uh, but you know what it means more to us, to be honest, is getting really flattering emails from users. We're a free app. Uh, we're self-funded. And we get you know customer support emails like any uh, service does. But one thing that we love is our support emails almost always start with, we love your app. Keep it up. But you, can you fix this one thing? Uh, but it's great that our, our, our users seem to really appreciate how hard we're working and what we're trying to do. And the coolest thing about it is when we started this, we really didn't know all the ways it was going to be used. And predominantly, if you look at touchcast.com, which is like our YouTube, where people upload their videos to. Of course, you can play these videos anywhere, but that's the everyone has a channel that uh, they can use on TouchCast. 
And when we launched that, we sat back and realized that even on day one, teachers and students are eating this up. And the organic growth that we've seen in the educational community has been awesome. I'm a former high school teacher, Yellett, who I'll speak to in a minute. She has a PhD in education and technology. And uh, it was fortunate that um, teachers have really taken to this because that's something we're naturally passionate about. Uh, at the same time, you know, we have broadcasters using TouchCast. A lot of news outfits are using it to produce online videos. Uh, we have some corporate clients. This is how we make our money that use it for internal communications. But at the end of the day, the organic growth of the natural community has been all educators. It is amazing to see just how many educators and students are out there using it. Um, let's talk a little bit about the website because we're, we're saying that TouchCast is one app, but but let's just kind of set the stage here. You actually just released a new iPhone app um, about a John Lennon project that you're doing. Uh -huh. Tell us a little bit about that. Uh, indeed, that's called the Imagine Project. That's something we've partnered with UNICEF to raise awareness uh, for them. Uh, they came to us asking for ideas, um, and luckily we had something that we could uh, put together fairly rapidly that, where people get to sing along with the famous John Lennon song. Yoko Ono had uh, talked to UNICEF and the United Nations about giving them the rights to the song for this campaign. And the, the beauty of TouchCast is because we already have such a powerful platform it was easy for us to basically take that song and work with an amazing production staff to shoot a, a music video with a lot of celebrities that are already involved with uh, UNICEF. And the cool thing through our app is that you can add yourself to that music video and do a sing-along, which is, if you think about TouchCast, that's the sort of flexible tool we built. You do everything from sing-alongs to whiteboard, chalkboard-style presentations to you know throw up a PDF and walk someone through a slide-by-slide -slide sort of PowerPoint-like presentation. Or one of my favorite ways, as I'll show you here in a second, you can turn the camera off entirely hmm. and really use video as a canvas. It's almost like you're building a website, but instead of doing that with coding, you're just using video and using tidbits around the web to place on top of that. So it's a lot of different things you can do. Well, let's jump right into us. Uh, you're going to give us a little demo of TouchCast on the iPad here. And let's just be clear. I've been saying it's an iPad app, but you also are going to be opening up a version of this for Windows, correct? So uh, we have a version that you can get from our website right now that's uh, for PC. We recommend Windows 8. Mm -hmm. um, we have the iPad app, which is our most mature product. We launched the iPhone app around the Imagine campaign, so it's limited right now. You can watch the interactive videos, and you can record your sing-along with John Lennon, uh, but it'll be early next year when we start to offer all the features you're used to in the iPad app. So uh, anyone new to TouchCast, especially in the education community, we definitely would point you toward the iPad because of, we can do so much more on that right now compared to the other one. Excellent. Well, let's jump right in and uh, uh, give us a little demo of how this works. All right. Welcome to the TouchCast app. This is the new splash screen you'll see when you first launch the app. And of course, featured front and center is our campaign with UNICEF where you can sing along with John Lennon. This earth behind the sing button there is showing you recent uploads from around the world of other people and sing it. And it's kind of fun because you can actually put your finger on this and really spin the earth around as you look at uh, where uploads are coming from. Um, but what I want to show you today is really how do you make a touch cast. And to do that, I'm going to go click on this button over here on the left called Cast Side. And it's on the Cast Side where you really kind of make your videos. You'll see three tabs at the top, New Touch Cast, and that's what we'll start in, in a moment. My Projects, that's where you have a in-progress touch cast um, sort of compiled. Video clips, all the information and assets that you need to make that video are all stored together in a project. And then finally, we have My TouchCast, and these are the final videos that have been uh, rendered or output already that you might want to share with the world or just share uh, with other people on your iPad before uploading them. Let me go back to New TouchCast here and really jump into the uh, studio, as we call it, to make a new one. I'll use the blank version here. And here I am now on the TouchCast Studio. You'll notice at the bottom of this screen there are five tabs. We have the Camera tab on the left, Effects, Whiteboard, Titles, and VApps, or VAPs, which stands for Video Apps in our world. I'll get to that in a minute. But these are the five things you use to control and make your TouchCast. This is a real-time compositing engine. That's a fancy way of saying it's basically screen casting, and anything you throw on that screen gets burned into the video. So if you throw a graphic, um, that is being burned into the video, so when you're done, uh, wherever that video travels, those graphics are burned in. 
Um, there's a few different flows with how you can make your TouchCast. It's a flexible tool, and we don't sort of force you to just make it in one way. Um, but I, I recommend preparing some elements in advance and then kind of recording your video and then sort of polishing it a little bit with some editing and then exporting it. Uh, but you can actually do this in a number of ways. But let me show you the way I, I just described. So in the camera tool, you'll see that we have these different uh, utilities to control your recording. One is the teleprompter, and I'm going to uh, show you that as soon as you start recording, 3, 2, 1, I just hit the record button there on the bottom, this teleprompter text automatically plays. And you, you notice that it's um, tucked on the left side of the screen, and that's because my iPad camera is on the left side of the screen. So when I start reading that teleprompter, it looks like I'm re looking right into the camera. And that makes everyone a really good video blogger on day one without any training. Of course, you can edit that text. You can paste text in from another source into that tool. You can control the speed here on the bottom. And when you pause, that text will automatically pause. So it's, it's a really nice way of... Um, making your first touch cast if you're putting yourself on camera. Of course you can use different cameras here with the swap tool if you want to use the camera that's on the other side of the iPad to shoot someone else you can certainly do that. And then there's abilities to focus, uh, uh, lock the focus, lock the exposure, and even turn the camera off. And Why would you want to turn the camera off? Well if you want to use touch cast more as a canvas where you're laying on the interactivity or the graphic assets you can do that and you can just pick a video background or a uh, image background to use instead. You can pull something in from a Dropbox or YouTube if you want to and just like that now you have a vis video background that you can put stuff on top of. I'm going to pause it again and, and turn my camera back on. Let's see. I'm going to have to wait for a reflector to catch up with me. One second. There we go. Okay, so now let's go to the effects tab. You'll see that on the effects tab we have everything from visual filters on the left where I can really change the look or feel of this video. That's kind of like your Instagram stuff. On the right side we have the sound effects. This is like a soundboard where I can play sounds while I'm recording. I can even add my own if I wanted to with that plus button and while I'm recording toggle any of these sounds on for the effect. You can add a whole soundtrack if you want to by pulling in an MP3 through Dropbox or iTunes. But maybe our most exciting feature in the entire app is this green screen functionality. I don't have a green screen behind me, so you're going to have to use your imagination or go to our website to see this. But when I turn this button on, it can remove any color behind me. Of course, it's built for green because green screens work so well. But once I do that, I can have a video background behind me or an image, or I could even have a website. Uh, or a PDF that's interactive for the viewers and it silhouettes me on top of that background. So even with an iPad in real time, you can replace your background and your mind will be blown by how well that works, especially with faster iPads. We always recommend people to use iPad 4s or newer because we can do so much more with those because they're 10 times faster than iPad 2s uh, or 3s. So um, keep that in mind. Let me go to the next tab here. The whiteboard is a pretty fun one because this just lets you draw on the screen. So here I am moving my finger on my touchscreen iPad, drawing on it. I can also type on it with the type tool um, if I just want to use my keyboard here and start typing notes. And the great thing about this is I can prepare all of these boards before I record here in my board list and then just toggle those on and off um, uh, when I'm actually recording and pull that right back on if I need to. So that's uh, uh, the whiteboard. Of course, you can pick different backgrounds if you want to and different colors for the markers or text. With titles, this is just a really simple way of adding a lower third to the video. We have all kinds of custom titles for you where you can change the text on the fly. Uh, but you can also import your own with this little plus button in here. Just bring in a PNG from Photoshop. and We have directions on our website about how to do that. And we'll have your own title style stored in the app for you to use as many times as you want to. And like I said, after you choose one of these titles, you can update it on the fly uh, by typing down here. I'll call this Teacher Cast. And uh, just, there we go. I can toggle this title on now, on and off, as I'm making my recording. And of course, we're paused right now, which is nice. You can always pause and just add more to your video. 
this is the real magic of TouchCast, these V apps. So let me add one here. Looks like I'm frozen. I'm going to give it a second. Jeffrey, it looks frozen to you, right? It just unfroze. Great. Okay. I'll get back to it. Okay. So the real magic of TouchCast are the V apps, these video apps. Let me open up this menu. I can add any of these elements to my video, and, and these are all pieces of HTML content uh, where I can pull in something from the web or an API that you might want. But check out these things. I mean, can, I can even pull in things from my Dropbox, like Word documents or PDFs. Uh, I can pull in a PDF from a URL here. Um, you can put another TouchCast video you made inside that TouchCast. That's where your mind starts to explode because it becomes choose-your-own-adventure st style. YouTube videos, any other video you want to import, Google Maps, we've got Twitter uh, stuff, we've got polls, we've got quizzes, I know teachers love those. Uh, let me show you a few quickly. I'm going to add a web page here in the top left-hand corner. Um, I'll do the Imagine Donation site uh, since we've been looking at that a lot with our campaign. Uh, and This will load as fast as our Wi-Fi is. There it is. I'll I'll click on this. This is like a web browser, right, where I can change the URL here. Or I could do a Google search here. But once I have the web page that I want, I just click on Create the VAP in the top corner. And there we are. Here is literally a web page inside my video that I can move around on the screen. Uh, this is a real web page I can zoom in on. I can literally make a donation here in the video if I wanted to. Um, it, any HTML you're used to seeing in a normal web browser, you can now do that inside the video. And not only can authors do this, but the viewers of your video can do it too. So if I were to start recording again here, hey everyone, here's a great chance to donate to the UNICEF Imagine campaign. Uh, just click on this and consider making a donation today. So just like that, I've added interactivity to my video very easily. It's, it's a, what we call a WYSIWYG interface. What you see is what you get. The one exception to that is this blue frame around the web page. It's not seen by the viewer. This is a tool for me, the author, as I record. And this button down here is your VAP options. And let me open this quickly just so I can show you all the fun tools in here. You can change the title of any VAP. You can change the URL if you had to edit it. You can say this VAP, if someone interacts with it, it should pause the video automatically. You can even put time and time out points on this if you needed to, especially if you're working with video you're importing from another source. Maybe you shot this on another camera and you just want to pull in that MP4 video file to TouchCast. It's a really nice way of making TouchCasts. Um, and you can even do fun things like uh, animate the appearance when it flies on the screen uh, so you can see as it kind of comes in it has a nice, nice look here. What I'm doing here is basically creating a tray down here of all the assets I plan to use when I record. So if I were to add another VAP right now, let's go into my photos, and I'll grab a few from Instagram real quickly, add those to the video. Now I've got four of these different images on my video, and I can just use the fingers on my iPad to move them around and place them like I want to. And you'll notice that they're all now down here in this tray. And what's really fun about that is I can hide them all at once if I want to, or I can even just kind of go through them one by one by using the next VAP button. So there's my first one, there's my second one, there's my third one, and you'll notice each VAP has its own memory, so wherever I kind of set up in advance is exactly where it's going to reappear when I need it. So I'm going to record just a little bit more. So one fun thing we just added to TouchCast is the idea if you make a mistake and you need to fix it, we now have a way for you to do that very quickly. So I can pause this and you see this little arrow next to the record button. When I tap this U-turn arrow, which we call the backtrack, I can literally just rewind my recording to the point where I made the mistake. And when I'm ready, let's pretend that's the perfect point to start recording again. I can just hit the record button and here I am recording again basically recording over the mistake I made. So you can really trim things on the fly so that your video is nice and polished. But we have more advanced editing features than that now. When I'm done with the studio part, um, I can always come back later, but I'll hit this Done button up here in the top right-hand corner, and this takes me into the TouchCast editor. And this is starting to play the video I just shot over in the studio. 
I'm going to pause this for a second. If you look down here on the bottom, you'll see what happened is every time I hit that pause button, it created a series of clips. So here's everything we just made together. In between these clips, I can tap on this button to add a transition. So I can make this a crossfade. So when this plays now, there'll be a really nice crossfade. So a lot of flexibility now with TouchCast to add some polish to the video. I can also select a clip if I want to, like this one at the end. You see how the blue frame comes up now. And I have these options of how to manipulate this one clip. I can add VAPs to it if I haven't already. So I could put a web page into this video if I want to. Or I could trim the clip. And when I cl click the trim button, you'll see it takes me into like an iMovie-like interface where I can literally just drag these ends to sort of trim the clip from the inside and the outside so it's shorter. And when I have what I want, I can save it. Or I could also use the scissors here to cut it into two separate clips right on the playhead. Now I'm going to save it. And you'll see that I now have two more clips there at the end of my video based on what I just did there in the trim. A lot of this stuff is self-explanatory. I'm going to skip over it, but I do want to show you this button right here, the Add Media option. And now that you work out a clip, you'll see that I can always add more by recording more in the studio. I can import a video from another source like YouTube or pull something in from Dropbox. Uh, or yeah, I can even pull in video clips from another project. So this is a really fluid, flexible way of working with TouchCast. And this is based on all the feedback the teachers have been giving us over the past year of how to make TouchCast a little more forgiving when they're recording their videos. Now, when I'm done in here in the editor and I've got everything lined up just like I want to, and I can even drag these clips in if I order I need to, I can go up here to save and share. And when I click on that, you'll see it just renders out my video. I'll give it a quick title and call this test. I can pick my thumbnail here. I can save it with this button in the top corner, and just like that, it's going to render out my video. Now, one of the best things about TouchCast is that we're always saving your work as you're working. So all the things that I prepared, my teleprompter script, my green screen background, all of my whiteboards and titles, all of my VAPs, all of that material is saved with my project. And I can come back to that project and work on it later if I want to. I can share that project with other people by uploading it to the cloud, which is something I know a lot of people like Brad Gibson loves because it means they can collaborate with other TouchCast makers very easily to produce videos, even if they're separated by thousands of miles. Um, and we really like this idea that even if your app crashes, because we're backing up every 60 seconds, we're saving your work, it's really easy for you to jump back in and have confidence that uh, TouchCast is going to get you uh, some great videos uh, as soon as you get this rendered. And once you have this rendered, uh, you can really share it to any place that you want to. I'm not signed in on this iPad yet, so you don't see all the options, but not only do you upload to your TouchCast channel, but if I wanted to share this uh, as I log in through Facebook real quickly, you'll see that I have options here once I make this public to share it to all kinds of places. I can upload the video file straight to Facebook. It won't be interactive on Facebook, but it, a lot of people want their videos there. Same option on YouTube. You can upload your video straight to your YouTube channel. We have a Chrome extension now where you can convert the TouchCast interactivity into YouTube annotations. You can share the link to Twitter, or you can email people the link to the TouchCast URL. Um, so lots of options of how you can share these things. We have a WordPress plugin for people who operate their own WordPress blogs. And of course, on touchcast.com, you can fetch your embed code just like you would from a YouTube video. So you can paste that embed code into your own web page so these touchcasts play on your web pages. And they're fully interactive there on WordPress or your web page when you use that embed code. So, in a nutshell, that is all you need to know about touchcast for anyone new jumping in on the first time. Here I am again in the menu. Um, and we have all these different themes you can use for video import to jumping into our virtual studio here, which we call the new studio, which is great for green screens, um, and all kinds of fun things I know teachers and students have really enjoyed with the role-playing aspects of TouchCast. Charlie, it certainly seems like TouchCast is an amazing app. I, I had no idea that TouchCast had all those great features and made it easy enough for students who are in first, second grade to do, as well as professional broadcasters. There are so many things that TouchCast can do where do you see the future of TouchCast? That's a great question. Um, we want to democratize the ability to make amazing videos for everyone. It's a free app. 
everything I just showed you is accessible in the free version. Uh, and we really want to make sure that all the educators out there, teachers and students alike, can embrace this platform for as long as we can afford to give everything away to them. So uh, we just are going to, as iPads get faster, we plan to just keep making this more and more powerful, while hopefully keeping it simple and easy to use. Does it work with attachments? If you had a shotgun mic or a light or something on your iPad, does it work with some of these extra accessories? Yes. Yeah, that's a great question. So we've become experts in accessories, and, and yes, TouchCast works with all these things. We're big fans of the PadCaster to be able to put your iPad on a tripod. I love, uh, there's a microphone that I think is especially great that is called the iRig uh, mm -hmm. Pro, I believe, or the iRig HD, and that plugs right into the lightning port on the iPad, so you get great stereo sound. Of course, the Apple earbuds are great, too. You can plug it right into the stereo jack, and it's almost a professional lav if you want to use it that way. So anything you have out there, there's a converter or something to plug it in now to the iPad to make it a real professional tool. I want to introduce to the program Dr. Ayelet Segal. Dr. Ayelet, how are you today? Hi, I'm great. Thank you for having me. Now, you've been mostly concerned with the educational value of TouchCast. What are you seeing out of teachers and students using TouchCast in the classroom? So um, thousands of teachers and students have been using it since we launched, and um, it's been very exciting. We've seen uh, um, three major categories of usages in uh, schools. Uh, the first one is really the flipped classroom usage. So teachers have been adopting it to take the flipped classroom to the next level, where it's a two-way learning. Um, they create an interactive lecture, uh, but these interactive lectures, um, the user, the students can actually um, uh, submit some information if they include in a poll or a quiz, or even if they're including a, a Google Doc within their video. So uh, it really takes the flipped classroom to uh, the next level. So we've seen a lot of excitement around that. The second category is student assignments, where um, stu uh, teachers using it to provide uh, students with different type of assignments, creating TouchCast for a presentation. Um, and um, it's really um, taking uh, the active learning and hands-on learning in the classroom um, and um, uh, they're using uh, it for different projects such as um, debate or interviews. Uh, they're using the green screen with role-playing. It's very, very exciting to see the creativity of the students and their engagement. And the third category is communication uh, in schools and communication really across uh, all different uh, type of um, communication uh, by principals, admins, teachers, students to the whole school have been doing daily announcement or some uh, reports and it's been really really exciting to to see that so it's a uh, more or less a third uh, third use 30% of each of these categories, um, which is uh, very interesting. You know, it's really neat that TouchCast is, again, allowing students of all ages to create some dynamic media projects. And it's really, again, the price point is perfect, right? It's a free app out there. Any school, any teacher, any student with an iPad or a Windows machine can take advantage of these great features. I, I want to say to you, know, to you and to Charlie, congratulations on having such a great app. I, I can't wait to see what the future of TouchCast is. Well, my friends, that wraps up another great episode of the TeacherCast App Spotlight. I want to thank again my friends from TouchCast for coming on the show and sharing their great ed educational resources. I urge you, if you have an iPad, check out TouchCast. It's a free app that turns you into a professional broadcaster. There's, of course, many ways that you can connect with us each and every week on TeacherCast and leave us some great ideas. You know, this show here was completely created because educators reached out and said, do you know anything about this TouchCast? You got to get them on the show. And that's exactly what we did. You can, of course, reach out to us by leaving us an audio voicemail at teachercast.net slash voicemail leaving us an email at feedback at teachercast.net, and of course, subscribing to this and 
all of our channels over on teachercast.net slash iTunes and teachercast.net slash YouTube. My name is Jeff Bradbury. Thank you so much for allowing TeacherCast to be a part of your professional development, and I hope you take a moment to share TeacherCast with your PLN today. Please join me each Sunday night on teachercast.tv for the Tech Educator Podcast and at, at 7 p.m. and at 8 o'clock, the 30-second take podcast done on TouchCast with our friend Brad Gustafson. Until next time, keep up the great work in your classrooms and continue sharing your passions with your students. We want to take a moment here and say thank you to everybody out there who's watching or listening to the TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. There's, of course, several great ways that you can participate in TeacherCast each and every week. We love it when you find us on Twitter, at TeacherCast. Like us on Facebook over at teachercast.net slash Facebook. Subscribe to our many audio channels and video channels over on iTunes. Email us at feedback at teachercast.net. Find us on Pinterest. And, of course, subscribe to our YouTube channel at teachercast.net slash YouTube. The TeacherCast Educational Broadcasting Network. What do you want to learn today? Today's presentation is brought to you by storyboardthat.com. Storyboard That is the leading storyboard creator for classrooms of all grades and subject areas. Storyboard That provides a simple, drag-and-drop experience with thousands of well-designed artwork to quickly create great-looking storyboards. This lets students really focus on what they want to say and unleash their creativity. With tons of pre-made teacher guides, Storyboard That gives lots of examples for common core aligned activities like breaking apart Shakespeare, practicing vocabulary, or conjugating verbs for language class. Sign up for free at storyboardthat.com or check out teachercast.net slash storyboardthat to take advantage of our 25% discount when you sign up for an educator account. Once again, that's teachercast.net slash storyboardthat.